guess, your reaction, all the moves that happened, all the additions to the team this summer? Yeah, great. Uh, you know, I think uh, every player uh, got the role here. Uh, they're all great guys so far. So, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Andre, just looking at that offseason, how do you feel coming into this camp? And just personally, what do you want to contribute this year? Yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, good, uh, good summer. Uh, so, yeah, I want to have a better year than uh, last two years. So, uh, work on some stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'm ready to go. How much fun was it for you at World Championships this year? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome to to just play back home and win the gold there. Uh, it's a big deal for you know Czech people to to have the worlds uh, at, at home, and if we win a gold, it's it's huge there. So we enjoyed it a lot, and uh, to win there was um, amazing. And then just on the back of that, now to be able to return with your NHL team and have that, I mean, how exciting! Personally, for you, is that part? <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. You know, a lot of family and friends will come to 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 watch it, and just the experience to to play home. Uh, even for me, I never know I'm I'm gonna play in NHL, and now you know I'm playing it in uh, in Czech Republic. So it's pretty special for me, and uh, I'm I'm super excited. How many tickets? Uh, not that many. Uh, you know, I think 20 20 each game. Uh, but yeah, it's not bad. What, what did that um, that trip to Sweden in 1920 do for you when you were in Tampa to kind of galvanize? Uh, 20, 2019, 20. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, <laughs> you're like, I am yeah, not that old. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, that was uh, one of the the trips that I think helped us win the Stanley Cup. You know, we we had a rough year uh, or playoffs uh, the year before, uh, and then next year we we head to Sweden. We we spent you know. Uh, week over there, we had uh, some fun with the guys, and it's I think really important to to get the chemistry with the with the group, uh, even off the ice, uh, especially when you have the new faces on the team. So uh, hopefully, you know, we're gonna have some uh, off day there, and I can take the guys, uh, you know, somewhere and, ha- and have some fun. Um, and the messaging provided here by I know it's just two, three days in, but the messaging that's been provided by the coach. Uh, what has it been, and you know, what it, what has kind of piqued your interest, if anything? I mean, Sheldon uh, is is great so far. He's uh, he's very, uh, uh, you know, he's trying to focus on uh, on little things. A lot of a lot of uh, s- system stuff. Uh, last uh, two practices, so and that's the the most important part for uh, for a team like us. So, yeah, and he's been great so far. How would you describe the atmosphere of a game over in Czech? Uh, I mean, in the world, it's a little bit different when, when everybody's cheering for a Czech. Now it's two two teams. Uh, hopefully, you know, there will be uh, more Devils fans. But, yeah, everybody wants to have fun. Uh, a lot of jumping, a lot of screaming. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but yeah, I think everybody will enjoy it. We keep hearing about pace and conditioning in this camp so far. Why do you think that that needs to be one of the focuses for this group this year? I think that's that's our uh, identity a little bit. You know, we're uh, I think fast team uh, need to be a little a little harder in the harder areas, and that's that's what we're trying to do. A lot of battles in the corners. Uh, so yeah, just just yeah, hard pace. It was nice for a day or so, and then it's kind of back to work. I, I don't know if comfort is ever something that uh, you feel uh, in this business which is I mean makes us better for it um, so yeah I mean obviously it was a goal of mine but um, it's in the past now and it's it's time to work here and maybe not the way you wanted it to happen but with injury comes opportunity and you know there's a few on the blue line so how are you feeling about you know where you're at and in training camp and your you know uh, ability to maybe fit one of those spots yeah it's always tough to see I mean we worked so hard over the summer and to, to have it happen right before training camp it you, you know you feel for for the guy and um, but I mean, it's kind of just a next man up uh, type of mentality. I mean, they'll all be fine. They'll be, they'll be back at some point. So, um, yeah, I mean, whenever opportunity's there, you want to take advantage of it. And um, however that might come is, is out of everybody's control. How does um, how does Keith's style of play benefit a defenseman if it does in any way? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think skating is an asset of mine, and he wants us, you know, sprinting and. Uh, killing plays, getting up the ice, and, and moving uh, a lot. So I mean, I I enjoy that, and it's something that's gonna you know take a couple of days for all of us to kind of figure out it slowly. Um, but I feel like we have a pretty decent grasp on it uh, as of right now. 
With the preparation going into your first preseason game on Sunday, how do you feel this group is adjusting to the quicker, shorter training camp schedule here? Yeah, two days kind of flew by. They were tough days, but they, they did fly by. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of worry about what's next in front of us and uh, another game with, I think, some special teams, he, he said, and then um, game the next day. So kind of worry about tomorrow and then see what brings us on after that. And just looking at Sheldon Keefe compared to other coaches you've had, how would you describe how he's been as just a coach in general for this group? Yeah, very detailed. Um, conveys his message in, in the meetings, and uh, it's very easy to pick up you know, what he wants and what he expects out of us. Um, he wants us doing hard things. Um, you know, we have hard goals, so we have a high standard. So uh, that started you know, day one with the skate. So, no, it's good. He uh, gets his message across uh, well training camp underway now and what are your first impressions of being here with the Devils and Sheldon Keefe and his coaching staff's mission so far? It's been great. I mean, uh, I think he did a really good job of explaining the structure that he wants us to play under and, you know, everybody's competing hard so it's been uh, it's been a grind two days but I think he got our conditioning to where it needs to be. Talking about that conditioning, we just constantly hear about pace and how that's part of the identity here with the Devils but when you look at this group, how can you all make sure that you're also contributing in other ways besides just a strong pace? Uh, I think just keeping it simple. I mean, uh, control uh, the things that you can control, like chipping the puck out, making good plays, and uh, just taking care of your body on and off the ice. What made this the place you wanted to sign a PTO? Like, how, how, what went into that process? It was close to home, and. Uh, I was uh, skating uh, with a couple of the guys during the summertime, and you know they just the, the group just looked really good, and it looked like it was going to be a competitive team. So you want to go to a place where you're going to win. So you know it's uh, the guys look great out there. The team will seem pretty happy to have you here. Just your relationship with them. Yeah, I mean uh, we started out in San Jose together. I mean we were roommates, and you know we have a lot of memories together. So I mean it seems like I'm uh, following him around. So. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's great seeing him in the locker room, and yeah, hopefully we uh, have a few more memories. What was he like as a roommate? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Snores? <laughs> no, he was a great roommate. He's a good dude, great guy, and, you know, we went on uh, lunch and dinners together, and, you know, when we were uh, young, I mean, it was just, uh, I think we are the youngest guys on the team, so it was just us two, so we kind of hung out a lot, so it's nice. Uh, now we're kind of the older guys. <laughs> who did you, who did you uh, skate with this, this summer? Uh, well, I skated with uh, Frank Loftus, and I skated with uh, all the guys, I mean, who came back early around August time. So, and, you know, it was a good, good team. So I saw a lot of, and when I see Brad out there skating, I mean, he's just <laughs> making it look so easy. So it's a lot of fun. Last year, maybe not exactly how you wanted it to go. What, what do you think went into that, and what are you hoping to prove being here? I got a lot of hockey left. I mean, the team wasn't uh, wasn't where it needed to be last year. You know, we uh, we were rebuilding, so it was a tough uh, being being in that situation. But I mean, I see great opportunity, and I see a competitive team here, and you want to be a part of that. So it's uh, you know, it's been a great first two days, and you know, that's where you want you want to be. I mean, a lot of pressure to make the playoffs, and you know, that's. Uh, that's what you're fighting for every day and every uh, practice, every game. You get thrown right into one of those top lines with Nico and, and Tatar. How is that, you know, working with those two guys? It's great. I mean, they're just so skilled and so smart. I mean, they can outwit anybody. And, you know, you're learning a lot. Like I said, I've already learned so much just by being here for the past month and seeing them skate, seeing them analyze the game. I mean, I just like picking their brains about everything. So it's, uh, it's great. And, you know, I think uh, we're meshing pretty well together as well. So it's been a lot of fun. And... Yeah, I look forward to playing some more games with them. Tim, what is it like for a player who's had an established career in the National Hockey League, but now you're facing this, I don't want to call it a crossroads, I don't know what term you would use where now you're coming on a PTO. Do you have to like kind of work your head through that a little bit, or what's that like for a player? Uh, for me, it's honestly, it's just status quo. I mean, every training camp that I came to when I was a rookie, it's just hard working for your nose to the grindstone and get right to it. You're competing to... Uh, play in the National Hockey League and every game uh, it, it's it's a grind so you know I think that's the mentality and that's been the mentality ever since I came into the league and it's going to be the same mentality until the day I get out.
talking to Fitzgerald yesterday. He mentioned you as a, you know an actual NHLer, not someone just here on the PTO. Was that a boost of confidence for you? Yeah, you know I, you know I feel like I can skate with these guys. I can make plays, uh, pat, make good passes, make good shots. Uh, you know I think my biggest asset is just getting on the hunt. You know getting the puck and uh, you know making plays and uh, making stuff happen. Have you ever been to Frog? Yeah, yeah, I have been uh, with uh, with the Sharks. Um, who do we we played against Nashville? So, and how was that trip? <laughs> it was a long, longer flight. I mean, uh, going from West Coast all the way out. I mean, it was a it was a big time change, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, it'll be fun fun again. <laughs> what specifically do you remember about the atmosphere and the experience of playing a game there? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, the fans are just so passionate in Czech. I mean. We got Pally on the team too, so it's going to be a home crown for him, him, I bet. So, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, they love their hockey over there, and it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Really passionate fans, and I mean, the big thing is is to get two points and hit the ground running. Sheldon, one of the things that um, guys have really been saying is your ability to communicate um, exactly what you want. I'm wondering where did you sort of learn your communication style, and maybe some of the best communicators that you've worked with. Well, I think a lot of it, I guess, would just come through experience. You know, I don't think it, it's certainly not a natural thing for me, but, it, uh, you know, with a lot of experience, I think it's a very important thing. Clearly, as a coach and a leader, you need to be able to speak uh, with conviction and, and with clarity. So I've worked I've worked at that, you know, a lot over the years, my, my early years of coaching and, and uh, you know, studied it, went to conferences, reading about it, all that kind of stuff to try to, help you to be as prepared as possible because especially in a case like this you only really get one opportunity at a first impression and to set a tone and all those kind of things so you really want to make sure that's right and and then obviously preparation uh, like anything else is a, an important thing preparation gives you confidence and ability to go so I, I was happy with the, the way the players receive the message which is ultimately all it's about right I mean it doesn't really matter how I feel about anything that I deliver it's really about how it's received and uh, the feedback has been very positive uh, and not just in words but in actions and seeing how the players have responded on ice here for the first two days. When you talk about response what did you see from that first and perhaps only scrimmage of camp? Uh, I thought it was good I mean first off you got not, not ideal circumstances right you got a hard practice where we covered a lot for the first group and they got to go into the scrimmage after and the second group's kind of going in cold against a group that's gone through a lot more structure and such uh, so um, you know, I just wanted to give the guys the game reps, you know, the feel, the line changes, the shift length, competitiveness, all those kind of things, a little more free-flowing than, than a structured practice. So that's really all you want to get out of it. And, and then, of course, you're looking to see some transfer, mm -hmm. some things that you're, you've been practicing and talking about you want to see it implemented in the game. And, and I thought we you know, we saw some things. So it would be good to, to look at some clips and, and watch it back and, and see some of those things uh, on video. So do you find yourself or – do you see yourself maybe using a lot of concepts and philosophies that you used in Toronto? Did you do you have to change a lot? How do you come about to making those decisions? Well, I, you know, I see a lot of a lot of similarities, uh, you know, and things that we can do here, uh, and a lot of our structures are very similar. Obviously, I had those in place for a reason because I believe in them, and I think the the skill sets and makeup of the group is is. Uh, Similar enough in the sense that I don't think it, it, we need dramatic change, and I think the areas that this group uh, I would like to see improve upon, I think the structure works for that. Um, but we've gone through some things. I've, you know, I've, I've worked with the rest of the coaching staff, and each of them has you know, brought their own flavor to it uh, to be able to tweak something or change some language, those kind of things. But uh, for the most part, you know, the things that I believe in, you know, I'm going to reinforce here as well. And I'm curious your thoughts on culture. You hear it so much, and, and usually when you talk about culture, it's in-house. Like the players kind of define culture in the room. As a coach, how do you kind of, you know, push that culture and want it to, want it to bring to fruition for, for the players, for the team in general? Well, I, you need to lead them down the road. You need, and I think that, that clarity that you speak with in terms of what's acceptable, what's not, or the way how I've defined it is sort of what's cool and what's not. Uh, you know what's accepted and what's not like these kind of things I think is really where culture uh, begins and I think we're in a good place there both in 
you know, some of the younger leaders that we have on this team that are here and established. And then you look at some of the experience that was added to the group this season. I think each of those guys that are coming in here, uh, despite being new, uh, that you think it's very clear each of these guys have great leadership qualities, and I think that's going to really help, you know, continue to drive us in the right direction. Your defenseman with those, uh, those pairs, how did you match them together, and then is that what we're likely going to see uh, day one? Well, we'll see. We, we monitor it, day, you know, on a daily basis. But you know, with what we have now, obviously, we've got some significant guys out, so that changes the mix. But um, like I said yesterday, with the forwards, you know, and we can we put together groups that you know, we want to start with and things that we want to see, which is reflective of how we feel about the group. Um, you know, if we were playing for real tomorrow, that's how that's how it would look. But we're not, so we've got some time here to continue to look at it, sort through it. See how guys mesh, but uh, you know we like the mix to start camp. A couple of the guys said that they maybe thought of Paul Cotter as more of a meat and potatoes kind of guy, but they were surprised by his skill. I'm just curious your thoughts on what you saw from him. Yeah, just watching him, well, knowing him from the league, but also watching him closer in the, in the off season uh, and knowing his history and talking with our scouts before before and after they made the trade. Uh, you know, there's belief that he's got far more to offer, and I see some of that with his skill set. Uh, played a you know, a certain role on a uh, very well-established veteran team in, in Vegas. And uh, I think he learned a lot through that process and me talking with him. I think he really took a lot through being a, you know, being a young player on a, on a very good team. Um, but we also feel he's got more to give. And for us here, you know, we think we're, we're going to start him in the spot and we want to see some of those, the work habits and the heaviness that he brings and the pace. Um, but I think he's got more. Uh, and then you know, I expect him, with, through his consistency, that what we want to see from him, that he'll start to push for more and push guys that are above him. Uh, we have a guy here, uh, in, in Kevin LeBanc, who's fighting for a spot on the roster. What, what have you seen from him and your first impressions? First, he's just coming with a good attitude, you know, talking with him. I think he knows his situation, but he just wants to show what he can do. And, you know, he's, he believes he's an NHL player, and he's proven that. Uh, and he plays with that kind of swagger when you see him in practice and game. He looks confident, comfortable, good skill set. Thought he made some plays in the in the scrimmage here today, and he's worked hard. So, you know, we'll continue to use the time that we have to to assess him and and uh, look to see where our group is at and, and fits. And his his crew will make a decision on that. You know, similar note to like the Paul Cotter, uh, Jonathan Kovacevic was maybe in like a crowded group in in Montreal, so he didn't get as much opportunities he could have. What did you see? When you saw him there, and, and how do you think he fits into this? Yeah, I've seen a lot of him, you know, from the time he was picked up. You know, we see Montreal a lot through, you know, playing in the division in Toronto and preseason games and all of these things. Um, uh, I may be mistaken on this, but I think he may have joined during the Canadian division year as well, and we saw him a lot at that time. Um, it feels like I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with his game, confident. So uh, when... You know, there was an opportunity to acquire him, and we ultimately did acquire him. I was pleased with that. I think he's, as you say, a guy that played, you know, amongst some real good prospects there in Montreal and a young decor and not a lot of opportunity to continue to grow his game. But big, tall, right-handed guys are, are hard to find, and especially those who can move well like he can. So, yeah, I really like him uh, because of our situation, more opportunity perhaps in – we thought would be available is available, and you know, like we say to all of our guys, be ready for that. And so far, he's looked he's looked good, and looks like he's prepared. And then for you, you know, like big picture, these first few days, how do you balance all the hockey with also trying to get to know these guys and know what what makes them tick and what maybe makes each individual guy different, or how you motivate them? Yeah, it's it's a challenge at this point right now because you're managing so many guys. First of all, uh, and uh, with that. You know, some of these guys, some of the guys I know because they're established in the league and some I've met before the camp has begun, but there's some when you start to include the AHL guys and the prospects. You know, I don't, I don't, certainly don't know faces to the name. So I'm just trying to sort through all of that. But it's an extra challenge when you're running from meeting to meeting and practice to practice. Um, but all enough of our guys were in early enough that we're able to have some of those conversations, meet guys, get a little more comfortable with one another. Uh, so I think we're, you know, we're managing as best we can, but certainly it's a work in progress. Coach, how is the working relationship right now with Jeremy Colton, and what does he bring to the table for your, your team? Uh, it's been great. He's got great perspective. Um, you know, I run a very inclusive staff. I want their opinion and, and, and uh, encourage them to, you know, tell me what they're thinking. Um, 
you know, obviously tomorrow's going to be a special teams day, so you'll see our, our groups kind of move around a little bit, and we're setting the groups up mainly to, you know, building around our power play units. But um, Jeremy's stick to the lead on that, and it'll be his chance to really kind of uh, lay a foundation for that. But uh, just working with him has been as good as, you know, he's got that experience being a head coach in the league before. Uh, which is invaluable. I think uh, uh, anytime you're head coach, getting feedback or a perspective can be a challenge. So to have those guys on your staff is important. Chip, acknowledging what you said about the season doesn't start tomorrow, getting back to the defense, what did you like about Hamilton and Dylan? What stood out in your mind when the season started? Well, the first thing is that they're new. Uh, you know, it's new, so let's try it. You know, Dylan's a veteran guy, and, and uh, you know, he can handle anything that you, you throw at him, and he's willing to do so. Um, but just the way you know the talk, the talk that he has uh, is always communicating on and off the ice. So we think that's helpful for him, for Hamilton. Um, so we just really wanted to see it. You know, we've seen Sigenthaler there. That's that's been done. We've seen that. Um, so I'll just want to give Dylan a try there, and um, you know, it's no better way, in my opinion, to kind of get in and get comfortable than to partner with a guy like Dougie. And lastly, the focus, the general consensus is the Devils in the region. Tending and he's a fan, which they do. But also, this team, team did not have a 30 goal score last year. Do you need to squeeze more out of this group? What, what is there to give? I think, yeah, I think individually, there's some guys that have more to give for sure. I mean, getting healthy and keeping guys in the lineup consistently, uh, you know, with some of your top people would, would go a long way in that regard. But yeah, I think there's, there's more to give. We're going to lean in and, and, and embrace the offense that this group do, uh, brings because it's elite in, in many ways. Uh, and even though, as you say, last season didn't have <clears throat> didn't have that 30 goal score, <clears throat> there's still a lot of goals being 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 produced uh, through this. So it speaks to the depth of the group. Uh, so yeah, we're going to embrace that. You know, you can't, you know, may, maybe uh, you know, maybe sacrifice is not the right word, um, but you do need to. You need to be attentive to the defensive side for sure. You can't go anywhere if you don't have that in order. But there's no reason why we can't be elite at both. I'm just curious. Uh, I know we're three three days in here. But just on ice, your thoughts of, of Jack, and just in terms of maybe questioning that he questions that you go, he's gone to you with, or just the way he thinks the game out there. What, what have you seen out of him? Yeah, a very methodical guy. Um, you know, he's, he's got a lot going on in his mind, and he's kind of one step ahead in everything, I think, and um, you can tap into that. He's got some great perspectives on his own game and, and the team's game and what's gone on. But I've liked that he's been honest. I think he recognizes where, you know, his own shortcomings have been and, and the team as well in this last year in particular. And he's, you know, ready and willing to listen and go to work. So that's really all I can ask for at this point. Just curious on how you maybe plan on getting the best Timo Meyer that you possibly can. Maybe it wasn't exactly how we wanted it to go, at least for the first half of last year. Some injuries, but how can you get yeah. the best Timo Meyer? I mean, the first, the first thing is just, you know, let him know and make him know that he's important. That's part of why he's on the line that he's on, and he's in, or why he'll be on the power play unit that he'll be on tomorrow. Um, he's an important guy, uh, both in his skill set that he has, but also with the size and the speed, the physicality that he can bring in his game. We need elements of that playing with our best people. So um, I think that, you know, looking from that opportunity, opportunity to get more familiar with him, and we'll take it from there. But he's a great player that, you know, has got lots to give our group.